Hey guys, so this is going to be a tutorial where I make a Instagram feed app with just JavaScript. So that means we're going to make an Android and iOS app without having to do any native code. And what do I mean by making this app? So basically we have this Instagram feed for some user account. This could be any account. And we're going to get each of these posts and the comments for the post. So it's going to end up looking something like this where we create our own Instagram feed. So how are we going to make a native app using just JavaScript? Well, I'm going to use this tool called Expo, and the way that this works is that you can make all of your app logic and UI using just JavaScript, which is a really cool concept. Expo will build the actual app binaries for you. So if you're a web developer like me, you can quickly transfer over your knowledge from building websites to building app screens. So I'm going to be using the Expo development tools, which you can find the installation instructions for on their docs page. I'm not going to go over that right now, but I thought it's helpful to be able to build on your computer. If you don't want to do that, you can actually go to this website uh, that Expo has called Snack. And what this lets you do is run all of your code in the browser, and then you can simulate what that code looks like on a device by just tapping play right here. So that's also pretty easy. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is actually create a new project inside of Expo. And if you're using Snack, you don't have to do this step. But we're going to create a new project, and I'm going to name this project Instagram Example. So once the project's set up, um, XDE should show this screen. And if you want, you can actually open this app by itself by using the Share button. And you can scan this QR code with the Expo Client app on either iOS or Android. And I went ahead and opened the directory that it created, Instagram example, and I opened this file called app.js, and we can see that here. That's where we're going to be defining our app logic and making our layout. So now that we have our project directory set up, let's go to Instagram's docs page so that we can register our application and get an access token. So this is the Instagram developer docs, and if you don't already have an account, you have to create one. But now we want to go to this manage clients page. And basically, you need to create a new client to get this client ID, which you're going to be using for registering your application and, and making requests. So now that we're creating a new client, all you have to do is fill out this information. So it doesn't really matter what you put here, but this all has to be filled out. And what really matters is when we go over to the security tab, this disable implicit OAuth is going to be automatically checked. And what that means is that the way that we're confirming and logging into an account is that we're doing it through server-side code rather than getting the access token through a client-side method. And for our demo application, we actually want to uncheck this. So when you're doing an application yourself, you probably want to have some server-side code, but for ease of understanding, we're not going to do that right now. Great. We just created our client, so we now have our own client ID. And remember, for your own app, you have to generate your own client, so don't just use the same ID. And now that we have this, we can go to authentication. And we're trying to get an access token for our application so that we can actually pull data from our Instagram account, whether it's this account or you want to do some your own account, whatever account you want to do, you're going to need an access token. And the way that we're going to do that is by doing client-side authentication. So first, we need to go to this URL and as you can see, we have everything here. We have the client ID, but we, don't, we have not set a redirect URI yet. And normally you would want to use your own actual website so that you can get this access token because it's going to have it as a parameter in the redirect URL. But for our situation, it doesn't really matter what URL we pick. So we can go up to Manage Clients and click Manage and click Security. And I just put google.com here, and as we'll see in a second, when we redirect to this page, at the end, it'll just have the access token that we can quickly grab. We have our redirect URL now, and before we actually make the authentication request, first there's one login permission that we want to add to our request. So we're actually going to need this public content permission, and based on this example, the way that we do that is we add onto our URL scope equals and we're going to have public content there instead of likes comments. 
Now that we know the last parameter, we can quickly go to authentication and we can actually fill in the variables for our URL. So we're going to go get the client ID from our manage clients page and we're going to fill that in for that spot. And for the redirect URI, we did google.com, so we just have to make sure it matches exactly what we had before. And finally, the parameter we need is it, for the scope, we want public content so we can get information from a user's profile. And finally, when we go to that page, for you, you probably have to click accept, but for here, now the access token we can see is just a parameter we can pull off the URL and use in our app. We're going to use the access token that we got, and we'll save it as a local variable so that we can access it later. And now we're, the, we're going to use a flatless component, which allows us to have an array of data, and each item in this array of data we can render independently. So we'll call some function, which uh, we're passing in to our render item property of, this, of the flatlist. So this JavaScript code that we're writing uh, with components and these import statements is actually called React Native, and that's what Expo is built on top of that lets us build our apps using just JavaScript. And right here, we're just adding a few import statements for components that we can use later in our app. In order to actually get the pictures, we have to know what the API endpoint res return result is. So I went over to the API at Instagram and checked what JSON I was going to get back when I made this API call. And I'm using that information right here to actually get the image URI and the username from the post details that we're fetching from the uh, Instagram API. So this is the create post function that is going to actually render each post in our flatlist component. And basically what I'm doing is I'm putting everything in a view which is like a div in HTML and we're having a picture at the top along with the text of the username and the number of likes that this post has. Before our create post function is going to be useful, we actually need to set the state with by populating our data and populating our comments array. And we're going to do that in our fetch feed function. And what we're doing right here is actually using the fetch API, which allows us to um, send requests over HTTP and we're, we're going to get uh, JSON responses back and we're going to be able to parse that and use that data to set values in our state such as the list of comments and the data that we need in our app. We'll make a function to get our comments list for each post and for every single post we're going to first check are there actually any comments for this post. If there are some then we'll have to make a networking request, but otherwise we don't want to waste any of the user's time or, or loading the comments. So when there are comments, we're going to have to make another networking request to the comments endpoint, and we'll have to use the post ID. And with, th with this endpoint, we're going to get returned back another JSON um, object, and with that we can parse things like the, the commenter's name and the comment text, and we can use that metadata to display the comments on our app. So you'll notice that I'm preloading all the comments at the beginning rather than loading them as we scroll down in the list. And that's just a decision I made because I think it's simpler to load the comments at the beginning. And since I'm doing that, I need to make sure that all of these asynchronous fetch requests that we're making to get the comments are all resolved. So at the end we're gonna make sure we're gonna do return promise.all for this array to make sure that all of our comments are actually re are resolved before we show this array. Use the component did mount lifecycle method so that our information is being called at the beginning of our app launch. And we can make sure with the app loading uh, expo component that's built in that before all this information is loaded that we're actually going to show the user loading screen rather than a blank screen when they open the app. Now we get to style our app. And this is one of the best parts about using Expo and React Native because styling is just like doing it on the web. We import this library called Style Sheets and we can style using a lot of the same properties that we would in CSS. So centering, adding padding, most of it's exactly the same. There's a few property name differences, but other than that, styling is going to be, be very familiar on this platform. Quickly, there were a few syntax errors that I caught, so we could add a plus at the after post ID, change comments list, and change posts array. 
So those are just some silly errors that I had. And also right here in this function call, we need to use the object operator to destructure that. Now just run npm install on your terminal to actually get the packages installed for the project. And we can open up XDE again and on the open the device on the iOS simulator or Android simulator if you want. And after this opens up and loads, there we go. Our app is actually working now and it's just like we hoped it would with the picture, comments, and the users and we can see everything. So just like that we have our app built and this is only on the Expo platform currently but we can very easily turn this into a standalone app on both iOS and Android and the way we can do that is we can go over to Expo Docs and we can click on building standalone apps and they have a tool you can install called Exp and after you create your Android account and your iOS account and you add a few things to configuration files you can very easily type one command and it'll build your iOS and Android binaries for you. And you can actually publish these then directly onto the App Store without having ever touched Android Studio or Xcode, which in my opinion is really cool. So it's clearly really simple to create this app from just concept to actually building it and we're using only JavaScript code, which I th again think is pretty cool. And for my next demo, I'm probably going to be actually building an even more complex app. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to clone the Instagram app completely. So that means user accounts, login, authentication, posting, keeping database, storing your, of your information. All of that we're going to do on the, on the next app tutorial. So I'm looking forward to that. Hope you guys enjoyed this. And hope you guys are inspired to build something cool.